Let's talk about something a bit more off the beaten path, shall we? I want to know who Beverly Loughlin is and why are we spending an evening with her? Not her, him. Him? He is Craig Robinson. Yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. So, Beverly Loughlin, I think it's meant to be Loughlin, Loughlin. And, and they've, cha- they've sort of changed it as a stage name to Loughlin. L U W F space L I W L N. Okay. Uh, Beverly Loughlin. He is. Despite the fact he's presented to us throughout this movie as some sort of stage magician, mm-hmm. he's actually a sort of folksy singer. Uh. Right. And uh, he's a folksy singer who, in preparation for his shows, does not speak a word so as to preserve his voice. So he communicates only in... Huh, 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 kind of noises. Man noises. Yeah, yeah, man no- pooping noises. Man pooping noises. Man pooping noises. Man pooping noises. <laughs> man pooping noises. Uh, right. So one day you have a coffee shop worker played by Aubrey Plaza who's married to her boss, Shane Danger. Shane Danger is played by Emile Hirsch. Emile Hirsch... What? Reality's answer to Vincent Chase seems to think he's Nicolas Cage now. Anyway, so Lulu, Aubrey Plaza's character, who is married to Shane Danger, reacts badly one night when Shane Danger decides he's going to go and rob Lulu's vegan cousin's shop and steal his cash box, Mm -hmm. which is just a lockbox. Now, this is all staged, by the way, like it's taking place in 1973. Right. Right, with the style and noir... Uh, neo synth wave kind of sensibilities of not 73 sorry 83 wow uh, it's taking synth yeah that's it's, not, been it's done. not been done has it it's taking place in the modern day though right what <laughs> oh. wait for it wait okay. for it okay. it's just everyone just looks like it's 83 right. okay so um in the meanwhile uh the vegan guy hires uh hires a professional to go and steal his cash box back from shane danger vegan guy is germaine uh-huh. clement from uh, uh Flight of the Concords. Flight of the Concords. Thank you. I was going to say the Mighty Birds then. I was like... The Mighty Birds. I was like, Mighty Boosh and Concords makes Mighty Birds. Anyway, um, <laughs> right. So, uh, Jermaine Clement is hired to go and retrieve the cash box. He winds up running off with Lulu. Lulu seconds him away to a remote hotel where she, dis- you know, having discovered that an evening with Beverly Luff Lynn, a limited musical performance, is to take place there one evening. She has something of a mysterious past with Mr. Luff Lynn. Meanwhile, the professional slash hitman begins to develop feelings for her. She doesn't reciprocate. And this all comes to us from the director of Greasy Strangler. So, here's a clip. Good evening. I'm the captain. What can I get you folks? I would like a rumble in the heather. And I'll have a rum and a ramble. Coming up. You know, those might have poo on them. You don't want to get poo in your mouth, do you? Oh, no. No, we're not eating these poo nuts. There you go, ma'am. Here's your drink. And here you go, sir. Thank you, Captain. And uh, let's get some fresh nuts, huh? Poo nuts. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Poo nuts. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Right. Um, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what the hell this was meant to be. As I say, it comes from Jim Hosking, who, who brought us the Greasy Strangler last year, mm. which came with all sorts of hype around it and festival buzz. And you watched it, and it was just one of the just most despicable films I'd seen in a while. It was it was just a, a movie that was so smug and self-satisfied. Um, did you feel greasier than I a actually greasy felt, strangler? Yeah, I did. I actually felt that going through. I didn't laugh once. I didn't get any of its comedic sensibility. Now, to be fair, I didn't get the comedic sensibility. I felt exactly the same about this for the longest time I was watching it. Uh-huh. Then, I think something like about two-thirds of the way through, I actually finally landed, I think, on what the film is meant to be. Uh-huh. Um, and obviously it intends to be as bad as it is, but it seems kind of self-satisfied in itself that it is as bad as it is. Okay. Beyond that, it's pretty much a standard excess baggage-like kind of a story. Uh-huh. Girl runs off with criminal who she's playing to her advantage. Uh, relationship between them forms or doesn't form yeah. accordingly. The problem is none of it's funny, none of it's likeable. It's all... I mean, Jim Hoskin can clearly shoot a film. It's evident that he can. Mm-hmm. But I think writing it is something he should not be allowed to do. He doesn't seem to, to grasp that for all the, the narrative threads he's chucking out, all these character arcs that he sets up, he needs to kind of do something with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aubrey Plaza, throughout this, is just consistently better than the material. And the performance she gives you is infinitely better than what we present what what she's been presented with 
it's, I mean, it's a real Rumpel Stoltzkin situation. I mean, she is turning crap into gold, but it's it's still gold crap. Um, <laughs> you can only uh, roll the turd in glitter, as they uh, say. Ex- exactly. I mean, by the time you get to the end of it, you think, oh, this has just been unflinchingly bad, but I have to kind of begrudgingly respect how committed it has been. To how being bad. How unwavering it has been in nailing what has to be the weirdest, most offbeat, awkward tone anyone's tried to commit to film since... Uh, incidentally, the, this director's last actual film. This tone at least connects marginally more than Greasy Strangler, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean it's any better. It sounds horrific. It is horrific. Don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to get a mainstream release? This does not sound like it is. It is because Greasy Strangler was a hit, man. It was. You should be ashamed. Well, not a public. hit, but it was, it was one of those. Yeah, it was a buzzy little sleeper thing, wasn't it? It made a couple mil, you know, in, in midnight screenings and things, as Whatever. these things are wont to do. Indeed. Yes. Well, it sounds yeah. awful to me, and I'm not going to watch it, so there we go.